helping a guy out the other day and uh, I asked him if he had a multimeter and he looked at me like I was from a different planet. He says, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> I said, you know, a meter for measuring electricity or resistance or anything. He, 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 he said he didn't know. So I had to go, you know, and get my meter, one of my, one of my meters out of my shop and, and go show him, you know, how to, how to do, um, what it was we was trying to do. At any rate, <clears throat> for those that didn't know, <clears throat> these are multimeters. These four on the top here are multimeters. They will perform a variety of functions for you. They are relatively inexpensive, such as this one. I bet, I bet this is a $10 meter. Um, it will perform this. I don't use it a whole lot. It's a backup, <clears throat> but, uh, it will measure volts in DC. It will measure volts in AC. It will also measure resistance and DC milliamps. All you gotta do is move your move your probes to what to uh, different positions to do different functions. For the most part, you're gonna leave them in common and volts slash ohms that covers almost everything okay they're they're fairly simple to operate this one is uh just one knob i mean you just need to know roughly like if we were going to go test to see if there was uh voltage in a wall socket in the home that's ac volts for alternating current and I know in a house, typically in the wall, you're going to be looking at uh, <clears throat> you're going to be looking at 115 volts. So my maximum voltage would be 200 volts. I'd set it here. I'd go plug those two probes into the into the wall socket and see what I got. Okay. If I was going to measure voltage in my automobile, which is typically 12 volts. I would not go over 20 volts, so I would set it at 20. I'd go measure. I, I would typically be looking for, depending on where you're measuring, at the battery, I'd be looking for something uh, between 12 and, say, 14 volts. That's typically what a battery will run at, okay? <clears throat> anyway, that's what a multimeter does for you. It'll also measure resistance, okay? If you're looking to see if uh, if you have a broken wire or something, uh, if if something is not uh, connected correctly, you know, if if two things are supposed to be, um, if they're supposed to be current flowing through something and you can't see that, then you connect, you you set it on ohms, <clears throat> set your meter on ohms, you stick one probe to one end of that object and the other probe to the other end of the object. And if there should be a direct connection, there you go. You should have virtual, this, this meter is, uh, the battery is really old, so it's not gonna function correctly. But you should have basically infinite, infinity. There should be nothing, no, no resistance, basically no resistance, okay? <clears throat> that's enough on that there's a variety of them I think I paid $40 for this one at the local lumber yard uh, it does even more stuff it will measure temperature with the right accessory and this is what the, and it came with that all I gotta do is plug this in and there's a thermocouple right there in the end it's gonna measure temperature okay amperage uh, it, it does other things. It'll measure hydrazine, I think. <laughs> okay. If you are needing to just measure, say, uh, voltage in automobile, and I, you might want to be careful with the newer automobiles with computers, but these are just test lights. You hook your alligator clamp to a ground source, and you probe looking for the positive 
somewhere and when it lights up, there's actually a light bulb in the handle. When you find that, it'll light up. They're very handy. If you're only looking for uh, something to measure current in a house or say even a generator, we used these at uh, the last place I worked. When we wanted to test a, a generator, it'll give you a light for 120 volts and a light for 240 volts. All you do is just plug that right into the socket. Easy. Now, there's some things that go wrong with these multimeters. This one, for instance, has quit on me altogether. Um, I've changed the battery out. I've uh, inspected the fuse. Of course, I did that with another meter by using the ohms function, putting the putting the fuse in the middle of the two probes, and I saw that uh, it had very little resistance. If it was bad, if it was a bad fuse, then there would be it'd be open. There's no connection there. Okay, but um, I recently have found the manual for this triplet. 9007 and I'm going to look through it here in a little while and see if I can uh, do some troubleshooting and see if I can get this meter back and running up and running This one I just found in uh, One of my drawers over there. My wife helped me clean up one day and um, She actually put the box that had this meter and the little the cheap Sperry meter in it inside a drawer and I didn't know where the meters were. I had no idea where my meters were anymore. So I went out and purchased another one. So, uh, hey, one is none, two is one, three is for me, four is more. I guess I'm at four is more now. So anyway, I've got a meter to test a meter with. But however, since this has been uh, lost for so long, the batteries are or dead okay so one of the one of the things that uh, you you might look at these things and go okay well I guess I need to pull that screw out to get my battery out and that may be true but it's not on this one most of these meters come with a plow a rubber sheath around them to protect them from shock and abrasion Today it's cold. Okay, sorry. It's gonna take a little effort to get this off, but And of course the older it is the Stiffer the rubber is It's not helping that it's a frigid probably 38 degrees out there today. I know I know I've lived up north I'm not there anymore though. It shouldn't be that cold here in Louisiana. All right, so you can separate your protective stuff from your meter for service. In this case, the battery is located down here at the bottom. You remove a couple of screws and you can put batteries in it uh, there. Don't bother calling that phone number. That's not me. That's not there anymore. <laughs> That's not a good number. Anyhow, um, there is another thing that if the batteries itself doesn't uh, allow you to power your meter up, you can open open the meter up a little further and inside you may or may not find a fuse and it's not probably not the kind of fuse you can find at a local auto parts place but Radio Shack carries them um, they're usually a, a some kind of a fast acting fuse depends on the melee uh, depends on the amperage of it uh, you need to replace it with exactly the same fuse that came out of it. In the case of this meter, I know because I've been in it before, it actually has two fuses in it. It has a half amp fuse in it, and it has a 20 amp fuse in it. The reason for that is these meters are capable of doing a wide variety of functions uh, with a wide variety of different voltages. Okay, you might be testing... 600 volts AC and then 6 volts DC This is the auto ranging meter by the way uh, I just select what type of voltage it is I'm working with these uh, Volts DC or volts AC and it figures out how much voltage it needs to 
um, set itself for. It'll tell me actually, okay? But um, yeah, but anyway, don't just, uh, when your meter quits on you, and it will most likely at some point, it'll quit or the batteries go bad. Don't just throw it away. Peel the cover off. Get you a screwdriver. Replace the batteries with a known good battery. Then test it. If that doesn't work, remove the battery again. Remove the back cover. Test your fuses with another meter. That, that's why it makes sense to have more. Even a cheap backup may get you out of a bind. You may have, like I said, one or two or more fuses in there. Check all your fuses. Replace the ones that are bad. Put your cover back on. Put the good battery back in there. Test it again. If it doesn't work after that, toss it. It's probably not worth fixing. I can't imagine what somebody would charge you to fix these things. Now, I'm talking about meters that are less than 100 bucks. There are some expensive meters which would be worth repairing, okay? But I'm not in the electrical business. I'm not in the electronics business. These meters work great for me. So if they have served me well for several years and I can't figure out how to fix them, I'm going to buy another one that's probably better than the one that's torn up anyway. So hey, until next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.